I'm John Fox, and welcome to the proximity. That's a gnarly shadow I've got there. I was going to try and control it with this. Also, I'm standing in the wrong place, I know. Cool, uh, we fixed that. We are now... Oh, I've got a thing out, don't I? That's why there's a gnarly shadow! Yes. Uh, so, one of the things I looked up, and I shouldn't have looked up, uh... I sort of accidentally looked this up, but you know what? I don't get to say I accidentally did that. I, I know how many days there are, roughly, and it's like 10. I've got plenty of time, but yeah, let's not let's not extend our gameplay just because of that, right? Because that's cheeky. I shouldn't have known that information. Uh, so I'm not going to push to the next day just to get that phone call about the piece of armor. But if I happen to find enough stuff to do before that, then maybe. Faint smell of soldering, melted insulation, nylon and ozone. I think we need to talk to... Uh, Everart. Mainly because I've got a friend playing this who was only on day three and she's like... Did you take the thing with Everett? I'm like, what thing? There's a thing? Uh, so let's speak to Everett. The other thing is, I just realized I've got an opening tool and I was supposed to be trying to open a thing. So let's open a thing. Odd that you didn't catch this graffiti earlier. Van Eyck Overdrive, it says. Measure head is opposite. Also, measure head, maybe? Always wanted to know what's in that box. Your race descent has only worsened since I last saw you. You have really let yourself go. I don't want to subscribe to his advanced race theory, thank you very much. Hmm. No, I think I'll leave that still. I can't punch him or anything. I think I had the chance and I failed. That's fair enough. I'm not that sort of character. Oh yeah, I want to look in that box. Because, uh... I think I saw the trailer and it was open. I was like, can it be opened? So, yeah. Dark liquid in the pot looks almost sentient. So yeah, that, I mean, that tells me it can be opened. That is another piece of information I probably shouldn't know, but never mind. But we were doing a thing for... We would have had to have done this anyway, right? Because the lady needs me to do a quest before I'll do a thing. And we've got to hope... That my curiosity doesn't get the better of me and I don't open that door. This is the one thing I've purposely gone out my way not to do. Is it this one here? Persuade the door to open. So I've got the... Oh, wow. I've been in the world for two days. Been in this world for many days. And I've got an icosahedral die set. Okay, the, the thing I'm... Holding has nothing to do with this. Despite the dirt that surrounds and trails you, a beacon of light emerges from deep within you. Hello? Is anybody in there? The door stands silent. Satisfied detective? A wry smile crosses the lieutenant's face. Try again. If someone's in there, I'd like to talk to you. Just like that, you hear a click, then a harattle. Some mechanism unlocks itself inside the door. What? Mega rich light bending guy. From deep within a, the container, a voice. Ahoy! Come on in! The smile disappears. You can't be serious. You know what? I might be thinking of a completely different thing. I have no idea what this is. Okay. What? Okay, I think I was thinking of a red thing, and I don't even know if I had the chance to open a red thing. 
The man stands at the far end of the shipping container. It's hard to say anything more about him. You cannot make out any of his details, but you do feel an overwhelming presence of capital. The feeling causes all the hairs on your body to stand at attention, like the soldiers preparing for a view. Squint. Something's amiss. The light beams bend around his face and scatter in a thousand directions. It seems the laws of physics do not apply here. They are suspended, suspended, distorted, an echo. Why are those numbers gone all weird? Is that the capital? Trying to visualize the physics at play is liable to give you an aneurysm. Don't try and think about it too hard. In the general stillness, only your tongue moves, flickering as you utter. What is, what's going on in here? Welcome, welcome. Not too much, actually. Just pleasantly surprised to have company today. You can't hear him, exactly, yet you're able to understand every word he says. It is very strange. An overwhelming hum covers everything. The voice doesn't escape from him. Now! He claps his hands together. What can I do for you, gentlemen? What you can see of his body appears composed in a sharp summer suit and yacht shoes. Who are you? Who am I? Oh, I haven't been asked that question for such a long time. There's a genuine surprise in his voice. I don't meet a lot of people outside my circle these days. Anyway, my name is Rustem Diodor, investigator, license holder, an extremely high net worth individual, and you are... Mr. Diodor, I'm Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi of the RCM. And this is my partner, Harrier Dubois. Pleasure to meet you, Harrier Dubois, he says warmly. I must admit, the name suits you very well. How did you become so rich? Oh lord, not this again. What's the matter, Kim? Oh, nothing, it's just that we've got this murder to solve, and yet you go around asking everybody about money. And every time I ask, you, <laughs> are you sure this is related to the case? You say, sure, Kim, I think it is. And yet it never seems to get us any closer to solving the case. The man chuckles. It's quite alright. I'm used to the question by now. To be blunt, I inherited my fortune from my grandmother, who herself had had an extremely high net worth individual back in Grad. Was. All I did was take her fortune and invest it in it prudently. Believe it or not, it takes more than a bit of skill not to blow a vast fortune on sailing boats, bad choices, and unsupervised state policy. And blow. Actually, at the level this guy is, it takes several generations to do that, but alright. What's it like being an extremely high net worth individual? The man exhales with a whistle. I gotta tell you, first being rich is a lot of work. You've got to work hard because everything's so darn expensive. You know, prices become exponential at this income level. But then once you've reached my position, it's nearly impossible for me not to make money. My assets are so diversified that I'm bound to come out ahead no matter what. Some of my lower net worth friends say to me, but doesn't that take all the fun out of it? And I tell them, not really. You're a thief. People out there are working their asses off while you chill here. And that's what? Unjust? I think it's perfectly just. His tone is ever so slightly less agreeable than before. What do you mean? Listen, Mr. Dubois. I used to be an idealist, just like you. But the truth is, we have no objective system by which to measure someone's value other than the market. Yeah. We should embrace that rather than resist it. The hand that allocates resources among men is invisible and cruel, but it is steady, measured, indeed it is just. Say nothing. Capital, he nods, make one speechless, doesn't it not? Blinds like the sun that rises from beyond the horizon after a gloomy winter. Hey! Hey, all this talk about money has made you lose the thread. What's going on with the light about this place? That's what you need to ask him about. There's something strange about you. What do you mean? His essence seemed to signify actual surprise. Well, I don't know how to put it. You look somehow a little different. Are you talking about my chin? No, no, I mean, I can't even see you. It's as if something's happening to the light. Oh, that's what you mean. Yes, I've heard of this effect. Though I've never witnessed it myself, of course. It has something to do with our Weiss-Wiseman coefficient. Ah, oh, what? 
It's some statistic thing. In essence, it says when an extremely low net individual meets an extremely high net individual, some of the laws of physics cease to apply. Are you telling me that you're so rich that light literally bends around your face? Among other things, but calm down. I'm but a lowly single digit billionaire. Really? No, not really. There are actually quite many digits. This man is chill. Is at least. This man. chill. Is at least triple digit billionaire. Kim, are you seeing this weird stuff? I see nothing of the sort. To be frank, all I see is a gentleman who's unusually well dressed for martinets and a cargo container, which I admit is odd. Yes, I imagine that does look strange to you, my container. What are you doing in this container? Travelling! This is a great way to get around. It's fun, it's safe, gives me a lot of time to think. By the way, let me now ask you a question. Where are we exactly? We're in Martinez. There's a creepy abandoned commercial area here. Well, as we say in the circle, one person's crushing business failure is someone else's development opportunity. It's a shame I can't get out and explore myself. One of the downsides of being an extremely high net worth individual is that mobs of low net worth individuals are constantly banding together to ask for money. Wait, so you don't help them? you got so much money it can't make a difference to you. There simply aren't enough hours in the day to hand out all the handouts. It's like feeding seagulls. There are always more, and they never seem to do anything interesting with it except more seagulls. Spending money is a matter of desire. I'm sure you agree. I don't have the desire for spending it like that. So you travel from place to place via shipping container? Smart? No. It provides a means to hide from all the targeted advertising extremely high net worth individuals are constantly subjected to. Luxury yachts, high fidelity portable radio systems, pale proof outerwear and so on. It just gets a bit middle class after a while. A bit bourgeoisie. Ah, so you're saying being rich isn't worth the hassle? What? No, I didn't say that at all. Being rich is great. Just don't tell anyone I told you that. The bending light appears to wink. You're a rich investor, right? Can I have some money? Would you please stop asking people for money? It does not reflect well on the RCM. To be perfectly frank, we can't afford to look worse than we already do. But Kim, I also can't afford to look any better than I do now. That's why I need the money. It's perfectly alright. Based on your appearance, I can tell I'm dealing with a smart man. As you may know, us high net worth individuals do not have a lot of cash on hand, investments, and liquidity are the enemies of one another. I think I only have coins for coffee machines. Haha, <laughs> here's free real. How much can, can, can you get for this? It gives me almost nothing. That's the idea, my friend. You've got to work for the rest. Maybe you can make that money now. Come up with an investment plan. How's that sound? These ultra-liberal types love losing l huge sums of money on ludicrous proposals. Oh, go, you should come up with a plan that's totally dead in the water. Oh, they're both red checks. They both require, require conceptualization. I th we should get back to our investigation. Thanks for your time. Thanks for stopping by. Even if you have an idea you want to pitch me, I'm all ears. T-shirt. Jacket, t shirt jacket. I'm not cheating, don't I?
Frustratingly, that's like I've got loads I could level up in that. Should we come back to that? I don't know how much of a chance we're gonna have. I don't know if I can be bothered to spam it like with the highest I can get. Uh, maybe. Right, I'm gonna save it here. But only because I'm worried he's not gonna be here when I come back. Because I don't want to scum it. I'm gonna go talk to Evra. Because we may as well, we may as well try and get that as high as possible. See, it's got to be something. Is there not? I thought there was a red one. You know what? I think I may have just had that confused. Oh, hey, Mister. I'm not gonna bother you with a long greeting, just like we talked about before. I know you're probably a busy, busy man being an important police officer. So that was weird. I'm glad I did that. I... Didn't expect that at all. This is not a fishing rod, is it? Mr. Devoir, every worker, member of the board, how can I help you today? I met a girl named Aselle who said she's working with you. Funny, the big man lets out a lazy yawn. That doesn't ring any bells, Harry. Funny, the lieutenant says, looking up from his notebook. He was trying to set up a narcotics operation in the old church on the coast. Oh, that Aselle, he taps his temple. Yes, I do seem to remember sending a pretty young thing down there to liven up the place. Get some anodic music down there. Did you tell her to start at the amphetamine lab? Amphetamine lab? He seems taken aback. That sounds very immoral and debauched. Frankly, a health risk. But what do I know about kids these days? The music they listen, the drugs they do while they listen to that music. He takes, shakes his head with a melancholy smile. Sounds to me like you're trying to start an amphetamine lab in the district. Lieutenant says with an uncharacteristic note of contempt in his voice, and you're using some delinquents you found God knows where to set it up to run it for you. Found God knows where? The big man exhales loudly. That Aselle is the daughter of Miko the Kebab, a man who once killed a guy with a kebab. I think the daughter of a man who killed a man with a kebab can handle running a nightclub, don't you? Miko the Kebab? Really? Maybe it was Bogoweer? Or Jacob? Ah, oh, he stares off into the distance, seemingly trying to remember something. I think it might have been Conrad. I let them go on with their operation. Lieutenant tilts his head, but makes no comment. Well, you know how it is, Harry. Kids will be kids. He glances at the photo on his desk. To her age, me and Edgar were getting drunk. Sneaking out at night, throwing rocks at motor carriages. But anyway, don't leave, let me drift away to memory lane. He adjusts himself in the chair. Tell me, how can I help you, Harry? Remember the container I asked you about? Turns out there's a mega rich light bending guy inside. Mega rich light bending guy? Oh my god, how did that get in there? He's so rich he could get in anywhere. Damn it to hell, Harry. He fast slams his fist on the table. I specifically told my guys to check all containers for mega rich light bending guys. I think he wants to take down the pro proletariat, Everard. Honestly, Harry, we might be moving all kinds of suspicious things through this arbor, but I won't let be caught transporting the light bending mega rich. He shakes his head. I have a reputation to protect. Yes, for God's sake, you're a socialist. You're right, Harry. I am a socialist. 
Face turns serious. I'm going to catch the mega rich guy inside the container, harvest his energy to power the harbour's fog lights. He bursts out laughing. I shudder to think what you're going to tell me next, Harry. Not for one second did he believe there's an actual mega rich person somewhere in his container town. Okay, lie. Open the door to your weasel den. Are you shitting me, Harry? Did you really open the door? And are you just telling me you did? His lively eyes are mapping your face. You're a wild one, Harry. Uh, is it a red test? <sighs> Actually, I need to get back to you on this door thing. Drama. A lot of stuff for drama. That was three items. You finally made it, haven't you? People point fingers at you and whisper to each other when you pass by, wondering to themselves. Where did that man get such the... Oh, I've got the piss fascist. Not what it says, John. Jacket. Where did that man get such a cool jacket? Did he receive it upon graduating Ecole Normale Superare de Badassery? Is he dangerous? Yeah, I'm right, I'm dangerous. You are very dangerous, my friend. Dangerous and cool. In fact, no one dares to say a single thing about the jacket. Believe me, they're all super impressed. Mr. Dubois, every worker, member of the board, how can I help you today? There we go, drama nine. No, no, Everard, I really did open the door. Good. Now take it a bit further. Take it home. Not only did I open it, I went inside too. It was a real weasel's den, Everard. I bet it was Harry, he says with a grimace. Then the smile dissipates. But seriously, what did you see in his apartment? A guy who's antagonised the Union... In a union run town, maybe it's political. Fascist insignia everywhere. Memorabilia calling for the return of the Golden Age. That's exactly what I thought, Harry. He slams his fist on the table. What a weasel. And for a second I was only curious. Not testing you. For the record, even. He was testing you. You succeeded. Thank you, Harry. You have shown me that the Deputars Union, the Citizens Militia, can indeed work together. He nods solemnly. Now, let's cut down to brass tacks. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who killed who and why. Real police work is going to start happening now, I promise you. Harry, this is going to be good. I've heard about the connection between the lynching and the strike. I'd like to hear what you know about it. By now, I'm sure you figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild Pines. Sent to scare us. Another violent measure of the top hats against us flat caps. I'm listening. Harry, this strike is the culmination of many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut down the strike by sending in armed mercenaries. You mean our victim? He nods gravely. A security contractor. Can you imagine that? Workers standing in in peaceful protest, united in the spirit of fellowship. They sent hired killers to mow us down with a machine gun fire. Performs a motion as if spraying bullets from a machine gun. I'm talking beasts. Hardened killers from proxy wars in Yesat, Seminine, Saramiz, Saramiriza. You name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages. Killing little children for the Senorita Pineapple Company, Harry. Everything they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Revachol into a third world slum, honestly. 
It's the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. Hold on, you have a village elephant? No, Harry, the elephant is metaphorical, and so is the village, but the mercs and their brutality are very real. Go on. Now, I haven't personally witnessed any brutalities out there. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go somewhere, they just move my container. <laughs> Wait, they move the container? Yes, I'm an old man, Harry. My legs aren't what they used to be. They lift my office off it. Well, they do that as well. They lift my office with that big crane. It's actually very fun. You should try it. But enough about me and my fun container. It's face to serious. The killers the company hired. I think they were three of them. All hardened commando types. One of them got downright suicidal, getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. He shakes his head. Even by their own negotiator, their own negotiator control him. That's your boy. The one who likes hanging out in trees. By the negotiator, you mean Joyce. Harry, he says, ignoring the lieutenant. You don't need to real what you don't what you need to realise is we dock workers are not pushovers. We've got grit, Harry. This whole neighbourhood does. Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, he raises his finger, we push to kill. Wait, the whole neighbourhood is in on it? Potentially, Harry. Potentially. We've got arm wrestling champions, rowing club people, ex-coal miners, tough guys, all ready to spring into action for the home base. Who exactly did the pushing? There's a militant wing inside the Union. A group of people whose duties don't involve manual labour, but peacekeeping in the neighbourhood. Making sure everything runs smoothly. Sounds a bit like organised crime. They're just like you guys. He nods to you and Lieutenant. Idealistic people want to make sure bad things don't happen. And if they already have, well, punishment must follow. Again, that sounds like organised crime. So these idealists killed our victim? Hmm. One day, Titus Hardy, leader of the peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, socialist, democratic father drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burdening the land. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. He chuckles, I gave them two weeks paid leave and told them to lay low to avoid realized retaliation. Aren't you worried we might arrest them for this? Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested. They're Martinez boys. Tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in, he chuckles. <laughs> Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. Who doesn't want to counter the narrative that exonerates the Union, but why? Tell me about Titus Hardy and his crew. Oh, they are simply fine young men, all seven of them, exemplary union members, always working to advance their position in the local socialist democratic movement, or members. Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. He starts laughing. <laughs> Gotta love his initiative. Interesting. Who's second in command? They're almost all of them great guys, born leaders. Whatever happened, I'm sure they only had the best interests of Martinez and Revachol in mind. Work with them. Hell, interview them. But don't fight them. They really are just like you. Men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets. He's betting on them being useless to you. You mentioned a lawyer girl. Oh, Liz is a bright one, he grins broadly. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy, but hell, Harry, she came back as a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. Wait, the girl by the whirling, who's keeping an eye on you, she talking about her? Okay, so it seems like I should have had this conversation ages ago. Did you send her to spy on me disguised as a gardener? I did that, didn't I? <laughs> She thinks of herself as a guerrilla fighter. These middle-class kids and the books they read are crazy, Harry. I think she would rather be an insurgent than a lawyer. I hope it's a phase. Everard, I met with the Hardys. Can you ask him to cooperate with me? But of course. 
It's the least I can do for my good friend Harry. I'll do the right. I'll do it right after we concluded this talk. Go now and tell Titus about this. See what he has to say. Also, Harry, here's five real. He holds out a banknote. I don't need it. I only wanted you to help me with the Cardi boys. Oh, I wasn't offering it to you. Just holding it out there. He pockets the bill. But I am willing to share information. Was there anything else? How do you know the mercenaries were hired by the shipping company? How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. He slams his fist on the desk. That's their MO. It's what they do. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a con security contractor. The strike was over. The workers' right to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary companies after a little rebranding. And I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. You believe the scabs were organised by the security contractor? You said it. Hell. The fist slams on the desk again. One of those guys looks big enough to take down the proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't happen to be showing up during strikes. The name of the company is Krenel this time. It might have been the sediment before. Of course, you're always one step ahead of me, Harry. I'm no genius. I'm in this position because of people like me. There was a bullet in the hanged man's head. So they shot him. He sounds pleasantly surprised. He was shot in the head before he was hanged. How odd. The man shrugs. I don't know what to say, Lieutenant. They told me they hanged him. A hanged man is what I saw when I took... Um, when I took a look into that yard. It's impossible to say if he's telling the truth, sire. What I do know is the case is in safe hands. If anyone can get to the bottom of this shot and hanged man, it's my two little policemen. Godspeed, policemen. Good talk. Let's conclude for now. Was it a good talk? He leans back, suddenly worried. I'm not sure we made much headway there. I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with the strike. I don't know what happened, Harry. I wanted to feel like Mr. Martinez, and of course, I wanted you to find your gun. Great sadness comes over him. But it's it's like I can't completely trust you yet. Yet? Yes, Harry. It's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man of the left. He says, slowly shaking his head. I want to, but I just can't. A man of the left? So you have to be a social democrat? He's been hurt too much in the past by men who aren't social democrats. What's that supposed to mean? I'm more left than you are. You're saying it, but I don't believe you. You know how it is. Company snitches. My agent... Argent provocateurs everywhere. I'm barricaded in this fortress of mine, and I need to get the message out. Will you help me? What would this entail? Once again, I require nothing unethical or legal of you. You just need to get the two little signatures on this piece of paper. Okay, this is what I was told about. He pulls out the envelope, and then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. Kim, what do you think of this? Depends. I don't think what we just got from Mr. Clare was very useful. He studies ever art. But he thinks it's your call. As I said, it weighs on me heavily. He bows his head in shame and looks up and smiles. But once we get really talking, well, I'm going to hand you the keys to Martinez. And maybe even help you figure out who's behind this killing. He's saying as little as possible, as vaguely as he can, deliberately omitting things. What are those signatures for? I'm glad you are asked, Harry. The Union is going to build a modern youth centre in Martinez. He grins broadly. It will be righteous. We've got to get those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. There's a nameless little street on the coast with an old houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need two more signatures to get this mission off the ground. You mean the fishing village? Yes. Yes, the little cul-de-sac on the coast. Where all the men have drowned. In either the sea or the bottle. The gloomy place doesn't have that union attitude. You're already pretty deep in this. What's a little more? No one can see you here in Martinez. What will happen to the current occupants? They're just going to have to deal with the construction noise for six months. And then they'll be living like kings. Right next to a fancy new youth centre designed by the best architects 
from Stella Maurice. You're absolutely sure the tenants won't be thrown out in the street? Are you sure no one's going to end up homeless? Am I? The big man shakes his head in disbelief. Harry, these people. Martinez is the most important thing in my life. I would never let anything bad happen to them. We're going to build a youth centre there. The value of their property goes up the, the, and kids have a place to stay. I'm looking out for these people and not pulling the rug from under them, Harry. I'm looking out for all of Martinez, just not the harbour. Ha <laughs> Uh, whew. Let's review this information. Let's have a look at our quests. You new cryptozoology business might end when you do. Okay, yeah, I need to do those two as well. going to build a thing it's going to disrupt the people who live there the people who gave me free place to live I'm going to take it I'm going to accept the task but I don't need to do the task and you know what I'm allowed to make some mistakes so. yeah. fine if I happen to be there I can ask them you bring joy to my heart such pleasure to be working with you here and you the open white envelope. You need to get signatures from Isopel Sadi and Lily Lillian Carter. The cul de sac is right past the pawn shop and across the canal. Uh, there was trouble with, with the water block. It should be fixed now. Once you have the signatures, mail this to th that address, 13022 La Roca in La Delta. Then I'll know you're a solid socialist. He runs his fingers through his thin hair. <laughs> Should I lie to him? Ah, oh, I want to lie to him. I want to lie to him so bad. I mailed the signatures you asked me to get. No, you didn't. He waves you off with a chuckle. I know the mailman, Harry. I know everyone and everything that happens in this town, and I know there's no letter in that mailbox yet. Just like I know you'll get it done. Once you stop horsing around, he nods reassuringly, let me know when it's done. Not going to be as easy this time. By all means, Harry, what's on your minds? A white envelope with a stamp attached to the upper right corner, handed to you by Everett Clare. So there's some legal documents with two names printed on them, Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. Both signatures are required. Logic medium 10. 
Try to find a loophole in the... Okay, look at the zoning plan. Uh, let's just read it all, shall we? You take the legal documents out of the envelope to a 12 or 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. Look at the zoning plan. You've sent her cuts into the ocean like the bow, the bow of some great modern ship. Apparently it's going to cover most, if not all, of the street and the square between the existing houses. Three stories tall. It's going to be awfully close to the already existing buildings. Almost wall to wall, practically integrating them into this youth center. This is it either ominous or cool architectural choice? Hard to say. My money is on cool. Yes! New 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 point, that's what I want. Uh my money is on cool. Looks like a cubic place. Oh, damn, that didn't help me. Kim, what do you think of this? I'm no property lawyer, but it looks fine, the Lieutenant replies, flipping through the documents. I like the print size. They're not selling or leasing anything. It's not a perfect solution, but... Shrugs. How else are you going to build something? It's always inconvenient to build things, and citizens inevitably have disagreements over such construction projects, but there's no other way. My logic is extremely high. It is a white check as well. There is no loophole. The simple truth is the current residents are going to lose their street access, and for the next 12 to 40 months, their lives will be dominated by constant construction noise next door. Wait, what are the ramifications of this? Once the construction starts, it'll probably take a few months, a year maybe, but even the most stubborn occupants get tired of living like this. They'll either have to sell their property for cheap and move out. After that. Look, Kim, point to the photocopy. These people are going to have to move away. Can we do something about it? Shouldn't have, I should have seen it. Uh, the lieutenant frowns as he reads over the document again. Everard probably has eyes on us, but he pauses it. Yeah, he's right there. Pauses to think. We could try and get other people to sign it instead of those enlisted. Or you could forge their signatures yourself. By the time he finds out, we'll be already gone. Ah, that's cool. That is a red check. And that seems super important. To the point that I may... That's more important than me having a funny time with the dude. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Okay, so that's something to work on. We are not... We're not doing that yet just yet. Don't forget it exists, John. We may have to start taking drugs. enough to sleep. Okay. I need to talk to uh, Klaje as well. Uh, I'm going to write down the tasks I want. Forge signatures already on the list, so I don't have to do that one. I don't have to write it down. But light spending man. Cool. He's, he's still here. Oh, I like my money goes up the closer I go to him. Or does it go down? My money changes depending on how close I am with him. Hang on, do I have three... No, no, I don't have three. Yeah, I've got three levels up. Oh. Okay. Well, I can only level up interfacing twice. And that seems more important. 
Doesn't it? Okay. We'll come back to him. We'll uh, see if I got some. Interfacing clothing. Now, obviously, I can't do it now anyway. I'm just seeing what clothing I've got. Okay, what jacket was I wearing before? I was wearing the, the cool jacket, wasn't I? Hang on, how did I miss them? Ah, I swapped interfacing two for interfacing one. That was terrible, John. You should check. Uh, where is it? It's a jacket, isn't it? But I can't... That's not what I was wearing. I was wearing... This. Okay, we're gonna have a look before I let you go. Oh, no, no, you know what? I'm gonna let you go, because time's wasting. Okay, I've been uh, John Proxy. You're now leaving the proximity in my Disco Elysium adventure. I will see you guys next time. Thank you. Thank you for watching.